everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you some of the basics of blocking. This is a great way to open up lacy projects or just kind of straighten out all the stitches to make everything look uniform. And if you've ever knitted or crocheted lace, sometimes everything can be kind of bunched up and not so pretty looking and then when you go and block it just kind of opens everything up and it, it looks like a completely different piece. So sometimes you don't need to do this for a project and sometimes it really really helps. So um, it's usually an optional thing but it is a really handy skill to know and it really can make your projects look extra beautiful if you take this extra step. So I have here just a, a circle motif that I've crocheted and if you would like to make one of your own this is the uh, lotus uh, dishcloth pattern I've just made this in some bamboo thread some bamboo crochet thread and a, a tiny little hook and I've made my piece here so we'll put that aside and you'll also need a cloth like a towel I have just a small terry piece of terry cloth that I'm going to use. Uh, if you're using something bigger, you'll need a larger towel. I have a blocking mat, and I'll talk a little bit about this in a second. And I also uh, grabbed these two things because I haven't done the finish work on my piece yet. And you'll also need, these are called T-pins, obviously because they're shaped like a T. You'll want to find some pins they don't necessarily have to be T-pins. I, I like this, this style of pin, but you will definitely need to find something that is rust proof because you're going to pin your project while it's wet and let it dry for a period. I usually like to give it 24 hours. Sometimes it takes a little less time. Sometimes times for something very bulky or thick, you'll want to give it a little more time. But you'll want something that's rust proof because this is going to be up against something that's damp for a period of time and mine came in a handy box but you can keep yours in a ziploc bag or something like that just to keep them all together and i got this in the um the sewing aisle of my craft store i've seen them also in the uh, yarn area of the craft store as well so let's get started to begin you'll want to make sure that the finish work is complete meaning all of your ends are woven in and um, you don't want to pin it with, with lots of strands everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and do the finish work of my little motif here and I'll rejoin you in just a minute. Okay, so I've went ahead and done all of the finish work so I don't have any loose strands left. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our project dampened. So you can do this in two different ways. You can take a spray bottle and mist your project, or you can go and gently soak the piece in a basin or a sink, or if it's a very large piece, the bathtub. And um, depending on how, this is fairly delicate, so um, I'm still gonna I'm going to submerge mine just to show you, uh, or you can mist it. It depends on how much you also need to block your piece and what you're willing to do. So I'm going to go submerge mine and just get mine damp, and I'll rejoin you in a second. So I went ahead and took this to the sink, and I just got it a little bit damp, not dripping wet, but it's thoroughly uh, damp all around it. And what you want to do, you never want to squeeze or wring anything. Um, you normally do blocking for natural fibers. This happens to be bamboo, wool, alpaca, um, any natural fibers. Uh, it doesn't seem to work as well for acrylics. You can try it. It's up to you. But I haven't had much luck with acrylics. And... Um, so we're going to just lay our piece instead of wringing it, squeezing it, etc. And I like to just roll the piece up in my cloth, just like that. Just kind of gently, gently pressing. You don't want to stretch 
your stitches and the fibers, okay? Just to make sure it's not soaking wet. And this really wasn't soaking wet to begin with. And then we're just gonna gently unroll so it's ready to be pinned at this point. So we can just move our cloth out of the way. Before we begin pinning our project, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the blocking mats. You can purchase these in the yarn area or catalogs. I like to just use a cheap alternative. This is a play mat that you can find in the toy store, in the toy aisle. And this is the graphic side of whatever character it happens to be. But if you flip it over, it's nice and unfinished and porous and a very nice space for sticking pins in. So let's come back to our motif here. And I just like to put it right in the middle there. And I like to put my pins, just throw a few out onto the mat so I can work that way. And let's zoom in just a little bit. What we're gonna do is everybody kind of has their own style and technique that they like to do. But I like to start at one top and come to the opposite side and then come to the opposite side and so I'm kind of pinning this uniformly. Don't be afraid throughout this process to take a pin out and reposition it as needed. That's totally okay and encouraged. You want this to be, this is part of your finish work. So you want this to be nice and neat and uniform. So we're gonna begin. Now my motif here has little points all the way around it. Uh, depending on your project, you have little things, other little things going on. So I just took one of these little points and stuck the first pin in. Now I'm gonna come down to the opposite side. Just find another one of these little points. And I'm just giving it a just the slightest little tug. You want to, when you're blocking, you want, want to open things up, but you don't want to block it so heavily that it looks overly stretched. You want to just open things up a little bit. So then I could just come to the other side, put a pin in. And again, if you're not liking the way this looks, like to me, this looks a little too open, you can always just scoot it back over. This is kind of a work in progress here. Then we have our next point. Then you can just kind of go all around your project. Get those points nice and sharp. Nice and sharp and clean looking. And this will really show, see I'm just kind of working, trying to just skip over and do each point across from it. And then we gotta come back down here and do this one. This works really well for uh, knitted lace. And see that one's a little too much. There we go, we can just scoot that back down. This works really well for knitted and crocheted lace. It works well for granny squares. If you're doing a project with granny squares, so just sticking that in there. Okay, getting all of our little points. This is a precision type activity. You can give it a spin if you need to. And I like how the blocking mats are interlocking whether you buy official knitting and crochet blocking mats or you purchase these play mats, they're interlocking. So if you're doing a shawl, you could kind of make it go out like that. If you're doing a scarf, you could just join a few to make a long strip. We only need one for this project. So is this, well, we have a few more points left. But this was the last one. Okay, here's a one up here that we missed. We'll just get the pin right in there. And we have just one left, I believe. So let's get that last one in there. Okay, so our, our motif is kind of opened up here. We got those nice holes. Now, what I like to do is kind of go back and, and proof my work. 
So I feel like this one is a little bit too much. So you can always go back and reposition things. Maybe snug that one back up against the circle a little bit more. So once we have everything pinned, we're just going to let this dry. Now you can check it and if it's dry before that, you know, especially if you have a project you need to get done, I, I'm guilty of um, hitting mine with a hair dryer at the last minute just to get that last little project done. Um, but I like to just put this away in a safe place up high if you have kids or pets because of the pins. Um, just put this in a safe place and let it completely dry for 24 hours. I like to just give it 24 hours. And when you're finished, you can unpin it. So we're going to wait 24 hours and then we'll, we'll rejoin each other and unpin this so you can see how it looks. So we've given our project a full 24 hours and it is now completely dry. So what we're going to do next is I like to have the box nearby and we're going to carefully remove the pins from our project. I like to go over to the opposite side. You don't have to necessarily do this as methodically as I'm doing it, but I like to let it off the mat evenly. Just like that. And you just want to be careful and gentle. Just remove the pins. So, definitely put the lid on those so you don't step on one if you drop one. So this is complete. So if we look at it, we can see that all of these beautiful decorative holes have been opened up and the points are nice and sharp. So our blocking project is complete and it's ready to go. It's ready to be used into whatever we want it to be. So that is how you block something, more specifically how you wet block something. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.